The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. You know, honestly, James, I think when I was growing up as a little girl in Scotland, I know that God had this in mind for me. Join James, Betty, Randy, and Sheila for this special program with some exciting news. And then I remember going home and getting down on my knees and saying, Lord, for the rest of my life, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. I am all in. She has been not just a co-host, she has been a mentor in the spiritual mm -hmm. sense. And a surprise special guest next. Well, you're really going to want to focus in on this. Hi, uh, James Robinson, my wife Betty and I welcome you to life today. We've got a little bit of a shift. Uh, Sheila Walsh has been in our heart from the time she was singing for Billy Graham, hosting with Pat Robertson, and I happened to be at 700 Club the day she left with a broken heart, and I actually tried to catch her before she rode off in the car. She went through some crisis times, never quit praying for her. Then I began to watch her blessed, 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 a miraculous move of God, women of faith, all the places she went. Then she began to go to the mission field with us. No one ever represented Jesus and his love any more clearly than she did. It was beautiful. And then she ends up here. And I'm looking over at her right now, sitting by her son, Randy. And Betty and I are going to say, you know, we will be married very soon, 60 years, okay? I'm going to be 80 next year, which means Betty will be following behind me. Here's the deal. Your prayers have lifted us up miraculously. But I'm going to tell you something. As you age a little bit, it sure helps when you have somebody lighten the load and brighten the day. And that happened with Randy, our son, and Sheila together. And I know Randy will tell you and probably tell you today that Sheila helped him as much <laughs> as anyone he's ever known in his life. And she came and sat here and hosted with Randy. And boy, you talk about you putting your arms out around people, this couple, Randy and Sheila and keeping your arms around the people all over the world, that Sheila went all over the world to say, notice them, don't overlook them. These are precious. And boy, did she show the love of God to people everywhere. And then ends up here. Sheila, no way we can thank you enough for the blessing. And I know you've been moved by God, you and Barry, and we love both of you. We've been able to pray with you guys. We've walked through a lot of storms and battles together for a long time. Yes, we've we watched have. God work miracles. Mm -hmm. And you were so thrilled to be on the mission field even more and talking about the mission field. How in the world do you explain you being here when you'd been so many places and finding such joy sitting here on Life Today and with Randy and talking about missions? Mm -hmm. how, how did you handle that? How did you get moved to that place? You know, honestly, James, I think when I was growing up as a little girl in Scotland, I know that God had this in mind for me because I remember when I turned 16, I mean, I'd given my life to Christ when I was 11, but when I turned 16, I was at a movie showing of a lot, the life of Christ. And when it came to the crucifixion and I was so um, devastated by what Christ was willing to do for me. And when the movie was over, all of my friends left and, and I couldn't leave. Mm. I sat there for probably half an hour. And then I remember going home and getting down on my knees and saying, Lord, for the rest of my life, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. I am all in. And I felt the Lord laid three things in my mind. Um, evangelism, that's, that'll always be my number one passion, letting people know how they're loved by God. Two, teaching the word of God to women. I love that. And three, caring for the poor. And I, I mean, I remember watching Life Today. I would watch it when I was a contemporary Christian artist on the road and be flicking through channels in a hotel. And there you'd be. And I'd think, family, there's my family. <laughs> and it was just, it was wonderful. And then all the years I was with Women of Faith, you opened up this platform to all of us. And we just, we loved it. I mean, all the Women of Faith speakers just loved you so much. In fact, we love them. Marilyn Meeberg has probably every bronze. So we that, we like, gave her a whole bookshelf for <laughs> 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 we just and and so it was always a joy to come, but then I, I'll never forget when you and Betty invited me to come and and join the team, and it was until the day I see Jesus face to face, it'll be one of the greatest privileges of my life to have been able to work side by side with you both and with Randy mm -hmm. in 
the tremendous work of Life Outreach International it has been life changing for me. Hmm. Randy, has she affected you? Well, I know a lot of our viewers love Sheila, uh, but I got to tell you, if you think you're her number one fan, you're not, <laughs> because my wife is your biggest oh. fan. <laughs> Tell them why. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's because uh, she she does not like television, being on television, being in front of people. And so she did a couple of programs with me, and, you know, she threatened me on the way home <laughs> with, with <laughs> physical harm and things like that. But, you know, I started really just praying. I'm like, yeah, Lord, if, if I'm going to, to do this, I, I, I need somebody. And so we started having discussions, and you know, I, you, you said, who, who? And the first words out of my mouth, I said, well, my number one choice, you know, if you're picking a team, you pick the ringer to be on your team, and the, my number one choice was Sheila. <laughs> and so to, to have her come here, and I, you know, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I still some days don't know what I'm doing. But to have someone who has so much experience and also has the heart for the ministry, uh -huh. and the graciousness that she has, I mean, because, she never, you know, talked down to me, belittled me. She always lifted me up and, and was willing to even listen when I was like, well, what about, you know, these things? She has been not just a co-host. She has been a mentor in the spiritual oh. sense. Can I just add to that, though, James and Betty? I, I need to tell you that I have learned a lot from you because I'm the kind of person I over work, you know, I over pre prepare for a program. And after Randy and I had done a few, you know, we'd say, you know what? It might be good rather than going to question three after question two, <laughs> to actually think how they responded to question two, because there might be something else. And I was like, that's brilliant. Okay. <laughs> so I'm so grateful to you wow. for that, Randy. I learned a lot. Wow. You know that, uh, you want to say something to Sheila right here? <laughs> well, um, there's no words to say how much we love you and we appreciate you and the compliment you have been to this ministry and the, our supporters love you. You can just tell from the response that we get. And I just praise God that you're following where he wants you to go. And you know, I know God's going to bless you because you've always sought to be where he wanted you to be at that season of life. And we all go through different seasons. So I bless you, Sheila, Thank and you, all Betty. that God has for you to do. He's just getting started. <laughs> well, there's no question in my mind you're doing exactly what God wants you and Barry to do. And you know, when you came here and you'd known me quite a while from all the ministering all over the world, including 700 Club or wherever you watch me in Coliseums, Crusades, similar to Billy's. But I knew that there was no question Jesus' prayer for supernatural unity as well as oneness with the Father, which is where it all starts. That's the evangelism. And then the Word of God sanctify you, not divide you, not bludgeon you, beat you up, cut you up but do spiritual surgery and sanctification. But then the last part of that prayer, which is where the enemy has focused his fiercest fury. He prayed for supernatural unity, yeah. that we would love one another like him the Father did, and that the world would know we are in fact his family, the family of the perfect Father, the body of Christ that looks like him with one head, with one shepherd over the flock, protecting, shepherding, leading the flock, providing for the flock. And he wanted us to be one, and you see this ministry emphasizing by bringing in all these different leaders from all these different backgrounds. And when they got here, they knew they were loved yeah. and they knew they were to be one body with one father and one head and they were to love one another. And you watched it happen. You watched them loved here and you just fed off of it and you built it and fed it. And now then you're going to be with better together, 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 together. <laughs> it's that prayer. And you're going to be helping host a show that has become very popular, which it, since women, I've sometimes wondered, you know, maybe I can go and sit down with those women and you talk to me with all those women. I love to hear what they have to say to somebody who's been married so long and has 25 grandkids. Here, Here's the deal. I believe that you're going to help people be better together every day all over the world in a powerful, powerful outreach. And you and Barry, I remember saying to you and Barry, I believe you've heard God. I'm excited for you. You were stunned because you knew you had lightened the load, yeah. but we were so with you. Were we not the moment yeah. you told us what you and Barry felt like God wanted I'll you to I'll never forget Barry and I driving up here that morning. And, and I'm saying to Barry, I, it, it's very hard for me to leave James and Betty because I 
A, I'm so committed to them. B, I feel like I'm part of your family. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how James will respond. And, and after working mm -hmm. so long with you, Randy, and loving every minute, and I, I never forget, Barry and I sat there in the conference room with you, and you prayed a prayer of blessing over us. But here's what's interesting, James. I've seen you do that with everybody because I've never worked with a ministry before that is so about the burden that God's put on everybody's heart. Like if somebody came in here, you would say, can I put your website up? How can I support your ministry? That is very, it shouldn't be unique within the body of Christ, but it is. And I just want to say what a blessing that is and how much I've learned from you. Don't you believe God's going to really bless what you're doing, where you're going, that divine I'm assignment. excited. And many, many people are going to learn that we can all be better together. Absolutely. Do you think that statement you've heard me say many times, the world seems to be fatherless. America's become too often a fatherless country. And if we could show people what the family of the perfect father looks like, the fatherless would run to that father. Don't you believe that? Absolutely. Don't you think you're going to be able to continue inspiring that? But you're going to be there every day. You're going to brighten people's day. You're going to lighten some people's load who didn't feel like they were supposed to necessarily be leading that. Yeah. And yet you will be there and you're very comfortable. You have a real peace about it, don't you? Oh, I'm very excited. And one of the things I love about the way that Better Together family is, is they'll have some that are more mature in the faith, that have walked with the Lord longer, and some that are younger, that are coming up, and to be able to share, there's something that feels so right about that, sitting together as family. And you know, I've been getting letters from South Africa, from Ukraine, from places where Better Together airs, and God is, I, th I think we've all just begun to see what God wants to do. Well, I'm gonna be praying for every ministry, every ministry leader, every person, period, because we are better together and he prayed we would be one. Now, the question is, well, who's going to host with Randy? <laughs> well, somebody else that has been all over the world of the mission field, someone who felt lost like we did. We lost a daughter, lost a husband, hadn't been married too long. Tammy Trent <laughs> has been one of the most powerful voices all over the world. She's one of your best friends. She's yes. been on Women of Faith. Are you a fan of Tammy Trent? You know, it, yes, A, a huge fan, and B, the minute I knew that God was moving me out, and Barry said, do you have any idea? And I was like, well, yes, Tammy Trent, because really? she, oh, absolutely. Well, she, uh, Tammy, uh, she'll be here in a minute. <laughs> yeah, she, she didn't tell us that. We heard it here, but you heard it? Oh, absolutely. I didn't have a shadow of that. the same thing he said. Is same that right? Thing he said. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. That was, yeah, that that was, was it. Our first it was year. so clear that she was the right person. Well, Tammy Trent, are you where you can come out here? <laughs> Would you come out here and sit over here by Betty? There she is. Just a little distance. There she is. <laughs> hey, it's a standing I'm already, ovation. I'm already crying. I have, I have the gift of your anointing and have the tears. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful thing. But there wasn't, a, there wasn't a doubt in my mind, Tammy. I mean, you've already been on all our mission trips, but not only that, I have walked with you for years and I've watched you and I've watched the way that you've walked through suffering, heartache, and you've kept your eyes on Jesus. That you're just, I'm just so excited for you, honestly. Thank you. I, I'm overwhelmed. Um, I'm so excited myself. I'm <laughs> sorry, sorry that I'm crying because I am excited <laughs> and I'm happy. But I just uh, you have been such an incredible big sister to look up to for so many years. And to have gotten that call to step into such big shoes was like, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> and yet, with all confidence and authority, when you know that God has got an anointing or calling on your life, yeah. you just show up. Right. You just show up and you jump all in, just like you said, when you saw that, uh, that crucifixion, like you just said, I'm all in. Right. And I think I'm in a season in my life where I'm all in Jesus, whatever the call, whatever it looks like. I don't know how much time I have left, but I want to finish strong. I want to finish well. So if that's that next season for me, if this is it, I'm all in. It's awesome. Randy, how you feel, buddy? <laughs> I know I'm excited. I do I have a question for both of you, actually. <laughs> okay. I've got we've just a few minutes left, but I, I think a lot of people go through, see, well, we all go through seasons of life. I know that. I think a lot of people struggle with change mm -hmm. and making that move sometimes to, for you, maybe leave where you're comfortable and, and you feel like you're a part of the team because you are. And then for you to go, okay, this is a, this is a shift. Yeah. How do you, how do you work through that big, big change. Because again, a lot of people are in that same position right now. 
Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just, it's, if that's, if the Lord's opened the door, I don't need to know what the second step is. Mm -hmm. I'll take the first step mm -hmm. and then that's the next good. step, because if Jesus is there, that's where I'm going. The only hill I'm going to die on is Calvary. <laughs> yes, that's so good. I would absolutely agree with that. And I think that's, that's how I kind of look at everything in my life. Like I, I don't really have a lot of fear when I think that Jesus might be guiding me mm -hmm. and leading me into something. Then I just, just like Sheila said, I just, what would I have to fear? It, he wants great things for my life. He wants to keep bringing increase into my life. He's not a taker. He's a giver. And he, he wants to bring wholeness to my life in all those areas of my life. So if, if I believe those things, then I'm going to keep walking toward him because I'll find him there. And um, I think in this season of my life, it's going to be a big awakening for me as well spiritually. I think that Jesus is saying, I want to take you spiritually someplace new. And so for me, I'm, I'm excited to see what that's going to look like. How do you explain the incredible, indescribable love that you manifest for people all over the world when you'd go to the mission field and you just seemed like you wanted to put God's arms around every one of them? And the love was so real. How did that incredible move of God begin in your heart with the connection with us? Wow. Uh, you know, I, I'm a lover of people, for one, especially children. And I think walking through what I have walked through, some of the my own personal hardship and disappointment and, um, and pain, whenever I got on a plane and I went to a different country with the team, and I would especially see the children, we'd start to play, kick around a ball, climb up a rope, play in the yard, play in whatever setup they had at the time. And we'd giggle and we'd laugh and I'd see the joy and I'd see the love. And, you know, I was a girl at that time, too, um, that was widowed and, and didn't have children of my own. So I think I just saw this as like, what a cool time that I get to have to love on all of these kids and just scoop them up. And children know if you love them or if you don't and if you want to hang out with them or you don't. And I just I love that feeling of truly being in their presence and loving them. And knowing, not just loving them in the moment, but knowing that I might get to be a part of something much bigger than that, that I could actually be a part of changing their lives somehow, that I could tell their stories and bring that back to the world and tell them about this great need that I'm experiencing and that it's really not that hard of a solution to jump on board and to become part of an incredible thing that's happening all over the world, such as the water wells and the, the mission feeding and the rescuing children. I mean, it's, it's enormous and it's a huge responsibility and one I take very seriously. So when I get a chance to get on a plane and wrap my arms around those kids and come back and tell their stories, it's just, it's life changing for me. And, uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. You did it as well as it can be done. Oh. And boy, we had a lot of anointed people go, but no one any more anointed than Sheila and Tammy. Mm -hmm. And that's a fact. And uh, now then you're going to be doing it so to speak, nonstop. Mm. Sheila, I want, we're going to watch you on the mission field. Tammy, to say you're just about to get your shoes and they're strapped on, but you're going to get them blessed <laughs> off. When you look at the love of God on Sheila, now here's what you need to understand, because you're going to get a chance to be somebody's miracle, to be an answer, a desperate prayer answer. Now you listen to God through Sheila, and you're never going to stop hearing God through Sheila and through Tammy. Mm. But listen to him because he's going to speak to your heart. Watch very prayerfully. Death due to malnutrition. It's why so many of these small graves are dug daily at this cemetery in a place called Catumbela. It's in villages like these where the death cycle starts off as simple hunger pains. Each day, mothers struggle to find enough food for their children, all the while hoping and praying that their children won't be next to succumb to the ravages of starvation. This is Maria. She's, she's just like me. She's a mom. The only difference is that Maria was born in Angola and her little baby girl, Maria, was born in Angola 
at this time when there's such a crisis going on. You're never gonna believe it, but this precious little girl who weighs six pounds is one year and seven months old. A year and seven months and she weighs six pounds. I, I don't know if you can, oh, darling, I don't wanna hurt you, but can you see her skin? I, I didn't understand this before I got here, but with severe malnutrition, the first organ to shut down is the skin. It's as if all the reserves go to try and protect what's left inside. So as you can see, her skin has begun to literally peel off her body. James and Betty, you have sat here over and over and over through the years, faithfully serving and feeding millions. But I know you'll see this. This is a fresh crisis. This is a fresh urgency. This will not wait. We talk about life where it's needed most, where it's needed most is right here, but even more than that, where it's needed most is in the villages where these darling children live. They need our help, and they need it now. The love of God through Sheila Waltz and through Tammy Trent has helped us save millions of lives. I don't know what you think when you look at a little child like that. You know, we have 25 grandchildren. Many of ours are that young of those uh, great grandchildren. But look at that little girl's face. I thought she was so beautiful. I could just see the beauty of God in her. Betty, you've watched me hold so many of those little children, and you have too. But I, I can't help but just reach out and just try to pull them up to my heart. I'm actually thinking I want to get them real close to the heart of God. She's so precious. And she's dying. Her name is Maria. Would you be Maria's miracle? Would you be the miracle that that mother longs for, like literally millions of other mothers are longing for? And I know one thing that Tammy Trent can tell you, Sheila Walsh can tell you, and Randy, because he's been many times too. We've seen those miracles of love. Yes, it's the missionaries that go there and find them and plant their families in the misery and the suffering. They march into hell for a heavenly cause. But the reason that they're able to save the lives is because of you. Oh, yes, the missionaries said, James, you and Betty, the only real big leaders of big ministries that just came and planted your life with us and helped. And I said, well, I don't know. I mean, they're probably like, no, you just really did. You just cared so deeply what we do. But our care cannot heal those children. It's your love, God's love through you. You're the ones that make it possible to feed them. You're the ones that support the missionaries being able to stay there. You're the ones that give the children to eat. You give them the bowls. You give them the nourishment, the food. You give them the future. You give them the life. And even begin then to feed them in schools. Would you be a miracle right now? We're feeding 350,000 children every day. And we could reach beyond that. You're the only one that can make that happen, though. Last year, you did that. Miraculous. You could do it now. Would you right now go get your bank card and use it like a check? Right here as we approach the year end, and you could be thinking about a great year end gift. We have people who go into their 401ks. They go into their retirement funds. We're doing that this year. We're going to go in and get some more money and make a bigger gift out of what we have of resources. And maybe we won't live long enough to use those but we can use them now to save lives. Would you whatever? Just think about this, 30, 50, $100 feeds three, five or 10 children for the next months. Could you feed a hundred by making a thousand dollar gift? Could you feed several hundred? Remember this, a hundred dollars feeds 10 children for the next months. 50 will feed five, 30 will fill three. Would you do that? It's big for those three. Father, I pray everyone will help in Jesus' name. Would you be the miracle someone prays for? Go to the phone, take your bank card, go online. Make the best gift you can. You're giving the greatest gift. You're giving life because of the life he gave. Thank you. Across the continent of Africa, children are suffering and facing severe malnutrition. Lack of rainfall and severe drought has led to one of the deadliest food crises in 40 years. 
with food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, we urgently need to replenish supplies to keep feeding the 350,000 children who are counting on us. Through Life's Mission Feeding Outreach, your gift of love can be an answer to prayer for a hurting and hungry child in their time of need. Call now with your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 to help feed and care for three, five, or 10 children for three full months. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you the Life Planner. Bound in soft-touch leather, this planner will help you in your daily walk with space for you to record your appointments, goals, inspirational notes, and prayers. With your gift of $100 or more, please request a scripture pen set, perfect companions to the Life Planner. These beautiful wooden pens are inscribed with scripture references to keep your heart focused on God's plans for you. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Let the Children Come. This beautiful bronze is a reminder to care for children around the world in both word and deed. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. We love you, little Maria. Would you please help us save little children like that? I don't know if you've ever given before, but would you give three, five, or 10 children in the future? Maybe you could do far more than that. Remember, we've got year in giving coming up. How about let's make it a big gift? Thank God we get credit for it. We've given enough to you know who to waste. This is not wasted, this works. And I want to say to you, Sheila Walsh, there are no words can express the gratitude and the love and appreciation we have for you. Boy, you'll always be a part of this family. Always. <laughs> and Tammy, you've been adopted into this family a long time ago. You actually said in many ways, James, you're like a, a dad to me. I sure have. And I want you to know I'm glad to be. I've got lots of kids, and uh, I'm glad to have you. Thank and you. you're going to be a big help, Randy. I know you all will be a blessing. We love you. Thank you for praying for me and Betty. Thank you for praying for our family. Thank you for helping those precious little children. Truly the least of these, but they're big to us because they're big to him. Thank you. God bless you. We're supposed to be there and elegant. Instead, we're writhing in the mud. Lisa Harper, tomorrow on Life Today. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.